The year is 1886. Mr. Richard Sears began selling watches through a successful mail order catalog. And the Statue of Liberty is dedicated in New York Harbor. That same year in Atlanta, Georgia, a new beverage is first sold and advertised as a brain tonic and remedy for hangovers. Its name, Coca-Cola. Meanwhile, in a growing cow town in the heart of America, Thomas Stafford and Charles Murray recently graduated from William Jewell College. They started a mission and Sunday school at 18th Street and College Avenue, just east of downtown Kansas City. They called it Walnut Grove Mission. In 1891, the world was first introduced to Sherlock Holmes and to a new indoor sport called basketball. In that same year, Charles Murray chartered a new church having 25 members. The church was called Walnut Grove Baptist Church and was first pastored by a recent graduate from William Jewell College. His name was Dr. William J. Williamson. The church nearly quadrupled in size in the first year to 94 members. In 1895, diagnostic medicine was revolutionized by the discovery of the X-ray. And there was a new engine invented by Rudolf Diesel. In that same year, the Walnut Grove Baptist Church had tripled to 304 members. The Bales family donated to the church a chapel located at 12th Street and Bales Avenue. As a result, the church was renamed to Bales Chapel Baptist Church. In 1897, John Philip Sousa released his most famous march, Stars and Stripes Forever. And the world learned about the discovery of subatomic particles. In that same year, the new Bales Chapel Baptist Church advanced in membership and required an enlargement to the existing chapel. Just after the turn of the century, when the first photocopier and electric typewriter were invented, Bales Chapel Baptist Church topped nearly 1,000 people in membership. Of the 1,800 Baptist churches in the state of Missouri, Bales Chapel Baptist Church was the second largest. In 1909, when Standard Oil's John D. Rockefeller became the world's first billionaire, the Bales Chapel Baptist Church dropped the word chapel from its name and became the Bales Baptist Church. In that year, they drew up plans for a new church building in order to meet their growing needs. By 1915, the first long-distance telephone service began between New York and San Francisco. At the same time, Bales Baptist Church had moved its services to the second floor of Bales Hall, located at 12th Street and Monroe Avenue. The move was to accommodate the construction of the church basement. The cornerstone of the new church superstructure, as it was called, was laid on April 16, 1916. In 1920, women gained the right to vote, and Congress outlawed alcohol. And the New York Yankees took a chance on a young Red Sox pitcher named Babe Ruth. In that same year, the first bricks were laid on the new Bales Baptist Church building. In the next year, the church began its week-long building dedication services where over $100,000 was raised for the new 64-room church building. At the time, the church had 1,163 members. Heaven, I'm in heaven. Later in 1933, while the Great Depression was underway, and Germany's Adolf Hitler was fighting to take over much of Europe, a young pastor named Alvin G. Hawes from Maywood Baptist Church accepted the opportunity to pastor Bales Baptist Church. Pastor Hawes served Bales for 26 years until 1959, longer than any other pastor in the history of the church. During his pastoral leadership, the church grew to its largest size, having 1,373 members. In 1943, the church purchased for $850 a Steinway Grand Piano that is still in use today. Soon after the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor in 1941, the United States joined the Allies in the Second World War. 
174 men and women from Bales Baptist Church served our country in World War II. Six of these men died. In 1944, the church purchased lots from across the street from the church and began to build the Bales Memorial Building to honor the World War II service members from the church. You ain't nothing but a hound dog The crying all the time You ain't nothing but a hound dog Crying all the time Well, you ain't never caught a rabbit And you ain't no friend of mine In the 1950s, when the post-war United States was booming economically and rock and roll spread like wildfire over the airwaves, things weren't looking as optimistic for bales. Despite the honor of their having one of the largest church libraries in the state of Missouri in 1951, church attendance started to decline. This was accelerated when in 1956, the same year that President Eisenhower added the phrase, under God, to the Pledge of Allegiance, and officially authorized, in God we trust, as the United States national motto, Eisenhower also signed into law the Federal Aid Highway Act that created the interstate highway system. The cheap cost of gasoline for the now ubiquitous automobile and the booming post-war real estate market made it easier and more affordable for people to live and commute from outside the expanding city limits. As people migrated to the suburbs, the attendance dropped rapidly at most inner city churches. Bales was no exception. Since that time, Bales has seen the Northeast Kansas City area evolve from an affluent, Caucasian, suburban neighborhood to a lower-income, multicultural, urban community. This change in the economic status hasn't changed the spiritual status for its residents. It has opened the door for greater opportunities for Bales to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ to its neighbors. Bales has touched the lives of thousands of people, some in just recent years and some for over 20, over 40, and even over 60 years. In over 115 years of its history, Bales has been led by more than 20 different pastors. Bales has certainly had its fair share of hardship over the last century. Even so, God has faithfully carried her through these difficult times and established her as a beacon for the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ to the Northeast Kansas City community. That vision remains as strong today as it has ever been.